100 years from 1950, we're going to have uh, 8.9 billion population, which is more than triple of the back in 1950. So very rapid growth of the population on a global basis. But at the same time, uh, since the uh, late 1990s and beyond, population, uh, particularly in uh, matured countries, are aging. So we are facing two problems simultaneously. If you look back, uh, you know, ma many matured countries, developed countries' uh, economic growth, when economy, uh, economy was rapidly growing, population was growing as well. <coughs> so this population growth and the economic growth come hand in hand together in most of the countries. But those days are over for mature and the developed countries, just like countries like uh, China. Right. Because of the one-child policy, their family is going to be a four, two, one type right. uh, family. Mm -hmm. Four grandparents, mm -hmm. two parents, one child. Right. Can you sustain the, the social welfare system or social security system with this kind of family, family structure? No way. While you see you know, population growth in uh, neighborhood countries, just accept immigrants uh, from those countries. That's a win-win situation, but uh, because of the, uh, some uh, difference, difference in culture <laughs> or mentality or resistance from the people, none of the countries have done this well enough, with a few exceptions. So what other insights have you developed in trying to solve the problem beyond immigration? They have to be prepared to raise a tax. This countermeasure is not so popular either. People don't appreciate it. You know, extend their uh, re retirement age. Mm -hmm. The developing countries have to help one another by sharing not only their uh, wealth, but also technologies and ideas, and also accepting immigration. <laughs> if we don't tackle on this and fix this problem, or at least show the way how to solve this problem, we are, you know, leaving very bad negative legacy to our next generation.